Hi all. Um, this uh, quick video is to introduce the gallery visit exercise for week uh, eight, week eight, and um, it's on the face of things it's pretty uh, straightforward. Matter of fact, you can find the instructions on page fifty-two. There's the uh, in your lesson plan is the test where you fill in all this information. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to visit a gallery as described in the book and basically a gallery just means a curated space where someone has thought about who the artist is the body of work how it's displayed uh, what's displayed uh, you know an artist could have a lifetime of, of work but the curator would come in and maybe pick out uh, 8 10 12 paintings just or sculptures or works of art from a certain time that kind of reflect who the artist is or best reflect the art or maybe there's a series or a theme or whatever so the curator thinks about this and uh, so they've actually taken the time and exhibited the art where with you the viewer the audience in mind and uh, so if you're ever looking at art and you can't find that who the what the title is who the artist is when it was created it probably wasn't curated and it's um, you probably need to move on and find something where it actually uh, a an academic, a scholar, a professional, uh, uh, some type of expert, a curator has curated this space. And that way you know you're getting a good representation of the artist and their art. So uh, paintings in the hallway or uh, hanging on the wall at a restaurant, that is not a curated space. Yes, the paintings were hung, but uh, they probably also have splattered eggs on them or something that uh, is not conducive to best showing the art or the artist. Um, so find a gallery and then you go and you answer the three questions. And uh, to help you with the three questions, let me first uh, uh, step back and, and talk a little bit about this. So on page 390 in your uh, textbook, there is a picture uh, by Edward Monk and it's titled The Scream. It was completed in 1893. Now there's quite a few uh, variations of this uh, that Monk did. But for the most part, the one that we look at is this uh, done in 1893. And it's with pastel, color pencil. Um, it's, it's one of these things where I, I love talking about this because my child is four now and he could do something better than this. As a matter of fact, I have about, you know, six of these particular pictures on my refrigerator right now that my son has done and you think you know okay what's the big deal and then you add on top of that that in 2012 uh, this painting was sold for 119.9 million dollars uh, just a little bit less than 120 million dollars for this pastel that's what your young brother or sister are doing in daycare so why did monks drawing uh, fetch that kind of money and that's uh, goes in with the whole thing of the value of art and uh, what is art and the timeline of art and so if you remember uh, when I talked about the purpose of art and the timeline of art that it's ideas and it's usually people that are uh, introducing new ideas or new ways of reflecting a period Edward Monk is definitely he's a post impressionist artist and he represents the time and his work is indicative of what paintings painters were doing during this time and the way they were seeing the world so you have this uh, bold strokes expression and you can actually see the artist's hand in the work um, also during post-impressionism they're really using strong smaller dabs of color in some of the works uh, even a thing called pointillism where it's the colors don't actually even touch um, but in this case, Monk is representing how the hand is, of the artist has become very strong and distinct and expressive. And so you can almost feel the painting just by looking at it in the bold strokes. And uh, Monk was, um, during this time, created work that we represent during the time. So it's more than the actual painting, but it's what he represents and what his work represents and how he's one of the first that are starting to explore this new way of expression. So, and and the other, the best thing you can do for your artistic career is die. It's not a good business model, but it's a fact. And so, since Monk is no longer with us, we know we're not going to see any more work. 
And so there's a limited body of work and therefore that pushes the price up. And it's, it's all these things combined. It's not always in the output of some beautiful painting that the, that the artist created, but sometimes it represents ideas in new ways. Uh, one of the first expressions of how people were seeing the world during that time, during that art period. So the three quite so now I jump back to the gallery exercise. You're going to go to this gallery and you're going to answer the three questions. One, what was your favorite work of art while you're there? And tell us why. Uh, make sure whenever you talk about a work of art, you identify the title, the art, the artist's name, and the year it was completed. Question two, what was your least favorite work of art? Why? Capture the artist's name, title, and the year that was completed. And then the third question is uh, find one work of art that you think is worth $150 million, or in this case, $120 million. Find one work of art that you think is worth $120 million and tell us why. So uh, that's the exercise for this week. Uh, you really have a couple weeks. Well, it's not true. Next week is spring break, but uh, um, you'll have off next week. But this is the last thing that we're going to do right before spring break. So good luck with that. Be sure and... Uh, Contact me if you have any kind of questions or need clarification. Otherwise, you guys have a great week. Enjoy your visit to the gallery, and I will see you online.